going on guys? Jamie Bruce here. Out on the walleye program right now. Uh, in the brand new Pro V Bass. This is the first, uh, the maiden voyage. So just scanning around, shallow. Uh, looking to find some, some shallow walleyes right now. It's spring, it's a great time to catch them up shallow. I've got a couple unique deals that uh, maybe not a whole lot of people are trying right now for walleye. Hopefully we can get around some and catch a few and kind of show you a couple new little tricks here that you uh, might not have seen before. So stick with us. We're on, Ron. Pretty bassy. Well, that's what we're after. I just threw that plastic up there and sometimes you need a little more reaction. I saw them follow out. Just put it down after one cast. I learned that much already. Fired the jerk bait up there a few twitches. A jerk bait for walleye isn't really anything too crazy and new, but I sure don't see it very often anymore. Especially here on Lake of the Woods. That's a beauty goldie. Not as uh Shadow wrap deep. There's not a chance I'm letting that one go. <laughs> That's going right, right in the Pro V live well here. Got a Chris in the, the new rig. That's a perfect starter, 17 incher. Don't like to keep them any bigger than that. Get her in, make sure everything works here. All right, like I mentioned earlier, we're, uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. I didn't bring hardly any tackle with me. I brought a, a few unconventional walleye rods. Um, well, they're actually all bass setups, but a um, couple little tricks here that kind of translate from the bass fishing universe over to walleye world. That's that shadow wrap deep. Um, good start for it. Two twitches in and, and lit them up. Um, I'll talk about the setups a little bit later, but I'll show you what else we're running here. Got the Smeltinator underspin. That's what I cover water with most most times. Um, it's you know it's two o'clock in the afternoon, hot, calm, and sunny. Not really an ideal time for catching walleyes right now. So you'll see those ones needed a bit of a reaction bite. So I saw them. This really got their attention. They showed themselves through that jerk bait back and caught them. And then I've got you know you've heard of Ned rigging for walleyes before. Uh, this is just kind of a taking it one step further and a little bit different of a rig. That's a quarter ounce crusher jig with a two odd hook. And then that's a Z-Man TRD hogs. Kind of looks like a little mayfly creature. Uh, for whatever reason, walleyes eat it a lot. It is designed for bass fishing, but this is a weapon out here. Um, pretty confident we can roll back up on them and I'm gonna put this in front of one and you guys can try to make a liar out of me. Okay, so you see me, I'm live scoping around right now, but you don't need it to do what we're doing here. Uh, in the springtime, you know, that's when a lot of people like to go walleye fishing, especially back before uh, GPS and live scope and everything. Kind of the deal is, and it pretty much holds true everywhere you are, whether you're on a back lake or lake of the woods, I'm looking at the light dark edge right now. I'm in a little bit clearer water right now, and pretty much you're casting where you can't, just where you can't see bottom anymore. So. I'm not wanting to be up in the boulders or anything where the smallmouth are. I more want to be on that sand bottom, uh, kind of right where it meets the rock. And that's usually where that transition line is. Uh, you'll see on the live scope here, it's just going to make it that much easier. I can just see them right there. I'll see if I can get that TRD hogs on them. I landed right in the pack. You turn down on it. Twitch, twitch. See that? He's nosing down, that's a good sign. We're on. <laughs> and this isn't like just some meat hole that we uh, we wheeled up on. That's a smallmouth. That's a good smallmouth. Um, it's not just a meat hole we rolled up on. You can just put her on the bank and start going. Points are going to be better. The end of this point is more obvious, but um, you know, I like to just put her down and, and go. And that's how you learn too. You find new holes. That's a little large for the boat flip, but nothing the Envy can't handle. 
That's a, uh, that's a nice big <laughs> small mouth there. I'll take that. Um, I think we'll eat that one too. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll let him go, save him for KBI. And I know that pack wasn't all smallmouth. Um, like I said, it's it's two or three o'clock in the afternoon on a hot, calm, sunny day. So it's gonna be more conducive to catching smallmouth than walleye, but I'll take them off. This shallow program used to go away pretty early on Lake of the Woods. And one thing I've been noticing, I don't know if it's a rusty crayfish or, or we're just doing it more now, but it seems to hang on a lot of the summer. Uh, it's, it's best in the spring and it fires up in the spring as the water warms, but um, you know, it's something you, you don't have to put down as soon as uh, you know, everyone runs out to the humps. You can, you can kind of just keep going and find these little spots for yourself. Um, everyone's got GPS now, everyone knows where all the humps are, so really kind of the last remaining secrets on the lake are on the bank. Um, so that's, you know, just something that adds a little bit of draw to it for me. There's a bunch hovering around this boulder here. Let's see. Got some up there on the rock. That's getting a little bassy, but a lot of times these walleyes will surprise you and they'll be right up there. But I usually like the little sand edge a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I love catching bass, but we're doing a walleye video here. The walleye a lot of time will get in line. Bass will be kind of on top of each other and the walleye will get in line with each other for whatever reason, so. Those are looking a little more like it. We're gonna find out right here. The fact that he hit it on the way down, it's probably a small mouth, but yeah. No, it's a gator. We got her all here. Nope, new boat. You get to stay right on the outside, Bubba. Alright, we're going for the grand slam here. I want my t-shirt. They give those away still? I guess you can roll that. I'm not really proud of that 27 inch pike, but we're uh, we're doing a reel. I got something to show you here too. I mentioned I didn't really bring much for tackle. That's my whole tackle box there. <laughs> so I, I did a little bit of pre-rigging and this is something that's really cool this year. It's the Rappler Rap Stack Tackle Trays and they've got these foam inserts in them um so this is just a date you know things i just use on the go uh, i've got underspins here got a couple of these just pre-rigged and these are just good like you know if moisture gets in there or anything like that they keep your hooks dry still you won't be adding rust or anything um just a good place to store them if i don't use them today they're going to be good here in a, in a few weeks or a few months even so uh just a handy little device here I am going to carry a little bit more to tackle than that fishing nationally, but that's uh, that's the beauty of this program. You don't need much. Nothing, nothing real fancy here. Right under the boat. That's a good walleye. Eat that old turd hog. It's actually what it's called. I didn't make up that name. Oh, guys are always grabbing walleyes, I'll just flop them. <laughs> a little on the large side for that, but I don't want to be wasting time out here. I'm using good gear, 12 pound suffix leader. We got high end hooks in those crusher jigs. It's a little more like it. Nice beauty. Goldie. Oh, just cinematic. Yeah, and that was on that little rig. I wasn't lying, I had to catch a bass and a pike before, but that's uh, that's just the nature of the beast fishing in the spring. Um, setups for this, gonna be really simple. This is a, a 7.3, 13 fishing Envy. This is on the higher end of rod, super nice. Um, you know, if you're really serious about it. And I've got a 13 Axum here. These are new this year. Nice drag and everything on them. Uh, 10 pound suffix, braided Pro Mix line and then a 12 pound suffix floral leader really no need to get fancy um you saw i just boat flipped that was probably a i don't know four pound walleye you can move them around you can you know we give them a little bit too much credit back reeling them and everything just get them in the boat especially if you're using a good hook and good gear um and then the, my other setup here this is a 7-1 medium omen black uh, a lot more affordable of a rod but still a you know still a performer i mean these are 
coming in around 140 150 dollars and i'm using them on the bassmaster tour with me there's absolutely nothing wrong with them 7-1 medium is gonna do everything you need a rod to do around here uh you know whether it's throwing the underspin or a little swim bait or or uh you know the crusher jig or a ned rig or a pop or a jerk bait this is the absolute general setup that you need 10 pound braid same as the other one 10 or 12 pound floral leader and then i've got that with the 13 fishing arios this is a new reel from them this year it's a lot like the axum the axum sealed for salt water this one isn't that's about the only difference but nice combo there not going to break the bank and it's going to do everything you need it to do the one key with the i'm using the crusher jig now and this quarter ounce is a little bit heavier of a size than most people would use up in this in this shallow water but i like it because i can really put it like a sharp snap on it and not have it come too far out of the strike zone. So it might seem like heavy weight for throwing up shallow, but it's for a reason. Got a couple just kind of sifting out to the boat here. These are pretty picky fish. I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not on a back lake way up north, I promise you. I'm in, in clearer water on, on Lake of the Woods in the middle of a day on a bluebird or so. Um, they're not just gonna be kamikaze walleye. There we go. What do we got, bud? Mixed baggage. Ooh, baby. That's a walleye taco. Look how pretty that is in the clear water. Yes, sir. Another one to the crusher jig. Turd hog. I don't know. Don't want to eat that one? Probably a little large. Josh says, yeah, <laughs> we'll tuck him back. Hey, I'm proud of you. You haven't screamed, let's go I yet. I was going to say that. <laughs> Come on. Saw it, eat it. <laughs> They're stinking shallow right now. Anyone that tells you that walleye are only a low light fish and they're scared of the sun. It's hot, calm, and sunny right now. And I just watched that thing follow the underspin and eat it. And there were about four more with it. That's an eater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start the oil. <laughs> Bassy. Yeah. Go brownie. The mixed bag continues. You never know on the underspin, just running down the light dark edge. Could be a nice bass like this. Could be a big walleye. Plenty of other critters mixed in. Look at that. So much fun. Welcome change up. I'll show you my rig here. This has uh, been a pretty universal lure for me kind of anywhere I've been whether it's the US or Canada or bass fishing or walleye fishing is a quarter ounce two aught silver smeltinator underspin by BT fishing three inch z-man slim swims and that's it just chuck it and reel it it's got a little tiny blade so it's not real intimidating like some of the other underspins and then we've got it on this smaller hook um, you know we have options up to the bigger hook but the smaller one just lets us finesse fish it for smallmouth and fish it for walleye. And it's really something that you can just lock in your hand and go. And you don't really have to be good at fishing to fish it either. When I'm guiding or, you know, with fishing with people who don't fish a lot, um, anyone can just throw this out there and reel it in. And that really is the right way to fish it. Um, you know, you can throw some pops in it here and there if you're getting follows and things like that. But just throw it out. I'm running the boat at it right now so I can speed up my reel a little just to offset the speed of the boat heading at it but usually just a slow steady retrieve is all it takes and you never know what you can catch on these beauties. What are we doing here? We're on. <laughs> oh yeah. Underspin victim. Look at that. <laughs> That's not a big walleye to be eating a bait like that. I think I want to keep this one yeah, instead of that 17. I'm going to trade them. There you go. I'm going to cull them. Well, yeah, I don't need that. Uh -huh. I'll just keep them all. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so I'm not on a total meat hunt here. I'm joking around a little bit. I got three in the box. Um, you know, we can keep eight. We're not going to. You, you hear a lot of talk about the limits changing and everything. Obviously, the walleye fishing's really healthy right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to fill the bucket with technology and and baits like this and and just everyone generally getting better at fishing. Uh, it's really easy to just kind of meet out a, an area. So, um, you know, everyone's got their opinion on whether the limit should change or not. And, and I've got mine too, but um, just, you know, just a reminder to, to be a little bit minded of, of the size of fish you're keeping. Legally, I could have kept that, you know, that 24 inch or I don't need that. Uh, the little ones taste better anyway. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of people still are kind of in that mindset of fill, fill the freezer and fill it up. And that's fine if you only fish once in a while, but if you're out here all the time, just, you know, everything makes it pretty easy now to catch some fish. So don't make the limit a goal. And, uh, no, that's my two cents on, on that. Now we're going to get back to catching them. Well, under spin, let her go down a little. You know, we found a zone where there's a good little wad of them, so I'm just gonna fan cast a little bit. Those ones are off the bank a little bit. Um, you know, I'm sure they're moving up to the light dark. There we go. That one's a little more position. Oh, just another honey. I just gave my big conservation spiel and now all these beauty eaters show up. I am trading, I, there's an 18 incher in there that I don't like. He's gotta go. He's only been in there for a minute. Three, that's good enough. My wife and I, leftovers. Three's, three's a good number, and I'm a big rig. <laughs> Everywhere around this thing. Should just pluck one more on the underspin. There we go. Oh, she wanted jerky. The old met is bowed up. <laughs> I better grab that one. All right, another jerkbait victim. What's that deep shadow wrap? I usually throw a little character in the color when I'm walleye fishing, a little orange on the belly. A little bit of sass for him instead of the standard just white or clear. There we go. Another nice one to end on. New spot, just running around and spring fishing. Doesn't get much better than that. This rod I've been using, I haven't teased yet. It's the 13 Fishing Meta. They just showed up this year. They're designed by Gerald Swindle. This is a 6.8 medium fast. And you'll see when I'm working the jerk bait, I'm kind of like going wild and down, down, up, side, this, that, and the other thing. She's just like a little lightsaber, this little 6.8. It's just super fast and you can do everything you want it to do. You're going to lose a little bit of casting distance. Um, you know, if I'm looking for a longer cast, I'll go to the seven foot meta. This is just a little weapon of a rod. Uh, the whole lineup's really nice. Check them out at sports headquarters. Um, another thing too, I don't know if you heard the click drag going off, but that's part of the inception slide two this is a new reel out this year it's got that click drag built in so you actually have a good drag on a bait caster finally back in the day people would have to you know thumb the reel and and you kind of had to create your own drag because bait casters were known for having a pretty dismal drag so it's a good long caster i just use straight 10 pound suffix fluorocarbon and uh yeah good good combo for bass and walleye another affordable combo uh you don't have to break the bank and uh, I mean, these come in every action in, in spinning and casting that you could really ever need for, for bass fishing. And obviously they work on walleyes too. But that's going to be it for uh, our little walleye tour here. I think we're going to go do a little bit of bass fishing and then uh, going to go carve some fish up and she's walleye taco time. Thanks for checking in.